Hello, and welcome again to our video version of Tuesday Tapestry. Recently, we had a wonderful interview on youth ministry, and I'm very pleased to have the very same people back again. We have Michaela Mannix and Shelley Valdez and Father Gustavo Vidal. Welcome once again. Thank you. Back by popular demand. <laughs> <laughs> During the, the Tuesday Tapestry, where we introduced this whole topic of youth ministry, there were several components or elements of youth ministry that surfaced and we thought it would be well for us to to take a second uh, look at some of these issues because they're very important and because youth ministry is so very important in our diocese. Today we'd like to look at three very important components of youth ministry, namely leadership, formation, and spirituality. And we mustn't forget fun. I remember Father Vidal, you told us <laughs> Uh, formation, fun, and faith with the three of spirituality, faith, combining those. So today let's take a look a little bit about leadership and formation and about the spiritual component of youth ministry. First of all, leadership. Uh, we talked a little bit, I asked the question about pastors, but then Michaela, you uh, brought up very interestingly, I thought, the whole idea of the youth themselves being leaders. How does the whole idea of leadership play into youth ministry, either in terms of those who are actually the leaders or the youth themselves, the pastors? When you say leadership, why is that so important and what does it mean in youth ministry? Well, I think it's important to have teenagers and youth being leaders because oftentimes you get teenagers who like to be rebellious and they don't like to listen to adults. So uh -huh. you, get, <laughs> you get their peers to influence them, and then they're more likely to make the better decisions, uh -huh. and more likely to join something like youth ministry mm -hmm. and find a love for it that maybe they wouldn't have had sure. just the adults been talking to them. Good, po good point. So you're kind of doing away with maybe some of the typical um, barriers that might be there, you yeah. know. I don't think so. I think it's incredible and it's humbling to see how many people end up looking up to you and you never thought that you were that great. I mean, people are looking up to you and seeing that you're doing good things for the community and they want to do that too. It gives you a certain, it sounds like it gives you a certain confidence. Yes, kind of yes. A, uh, it's, a, it's kind of, you're testing this out, see how I do, and then you go, well, it wasn't so bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, I would definitely like to add to that. Um, leadership is very, very important to us. Um, um, we have spent many, many years developing our youth council, and we have about 30 kids on youth council right now, and they're, they have to be in high school, and we, part of the reason we started it was um, our, our youth group goes from 7th grade to 12th grade, and boys and girls, and the younger kids wanted to go and have a lot more fun and do more of the activities and stuff, but the older kids wanted more. They wanted more meat. They wanted to be involved. They wanted to come run things. They wanted to make decisions. They didn't feel like it was their youth group until we let go of trying to control the youth group and turned it over to them. So when we started developing youth council, the whole point was to turn it over to them. So they, it became their youth group. They designed it. They made the decisions. They said what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, how we're going to do it. And they're honest brutally honest sometimes. We right. love it. You, I'm sure you understand. We ask them, should we do this? No, that's yeah. really stupid. Don't you? Nobody will come. I mean, and they, but they have ownership. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely wonderful. If you ask the kids, it's their youth group. They, right. they have that ownership in it so they connect and they feel like a part of it. And, and they're out there serving. Instead of all of us serving them, they are then, like you said, serving the community. And there's mm -hmm. such, it's so empowering. Right. So your leadership as, as one of the adult leaders, for example, of Blessed Sacrament, your leadership, it sounds like you're saying, is to have that prudence and the judgment to be able to oversee everything, but to stand back and let the youth be leaders, and you're still in there, you're in the picture, you're, you know, overall looking things over, but, but you're letting the youth have uh, their say, and and it is a way of worrying, you don't have to worry about imposing things from the adult perspective because it's the youth that are, are taking that leadership role. So and it's a great way for the youth to try their wings and see how they do. That's, that's wonderful. The other piece, Father Vidal, you had mentioned, uh, I believe, last 
time we got together, the whole idea about formation. And I know recently you were in Steubenville, I think, with some of your youth. And uh, uh, why is formation so important? What kinds of, what does this entail, this formation? Well, formation can be um, done many different ways, you know. You can take the, the youth to the uh, a big conference, Catholic conference, and there you will have speakers that will talk about different issues that the teens have to deal with. Uh -huh. um, they will have books, uh, literature actually available for the kids there. And many of those books are written for the speakers, for the people that are giving the talks at that time at the conference. So that's one of the tools. Although you also can do formation with the kids and with the team ministry, with the team um, uh, that leads the youth in the parish, you just get together. What we do is at St. Mary's actually is that we get together once a month on a Sunday afternoon and we plan what we are going to do uh, for the rest of the month, let's say. And then we have some of the youth, like you were saying, involved in it, you know, some boys and some girls that are older, because those are the ones that would like to plan things and to do things. They don't know everything. So what the adults do is that they are helping uh, do and develop the activities that they are supposed to be doing yeah. during the regular meetings. So that's part of their formation as well. Oh, okay. So it's quite extensive, really. Isn't yes. It? And it's something that you, you touched upon, I think is very important, and that is the whole idea of spirituality. Um, I've noticed that young people are hungry for God, and, and that, not just young people, but, but I want to say that young people certainly have this, this longing. For example, you know, for some time now, the, the monks of Teze have had a huge following among young people. And I think that, that people, the, young, the youth of our world, are, they do want to connect with God. Say a word about spirituality. I, I'm glad to hear that's such an important component of youth activities. Um, why is that important to you? And what are you looking for? And how do you find it in a youth group? Um, well, every year, just like they do, we go, on a national, we go to a national conference, and it's in Anaheim. And um, there's lots of music and lots of teenagers and people shouting things and it's insane, but you learn so much about yourself on a faith basis mm -hmm. and you do it in a way that's appealing to people our age. I think I personally like going to church and I like singing the music there and I like that kind of stuff, but a lot of teenagers see mass as a chore, which is unfortunate, but they're teenagers and they want to be entertained. Mm -hmm. So you put the faith in a setting that's more appealing to teenagers, and they get what they're hungering for. Do you talk among each other about God, who God is, what God means Definitely. to you? That must be very interesting to hear what you're peers are saying, it, it probably, I would find that very enriching, you know. Yes. Uh, some may be struggling, and that yeah. would be enriching in the sense of it would, because we all struggle, I mean, there's, there's no person who has perfect faith, we all have to, you know, to, to deal with our doubts and our concerns and all. So that would, you know, just to know there's other people going through the same kinds of yeah. faith struggles kind of helps you and say, okay, it's worth you know, this person has really gotten a lot out of that struggle, and now they're doing really well, and so it's, it's worth struggling, it's worth the effort. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We take kids, um, we haven't been to the Anaheim, but it's similar, it has a lot of the same artists to the National Catholic Youth Conference, and that's got all the components and some amazing spiritual, even uh, one of the years we went, they had adoration, and they had, like, there was like 24,000 Catholic kids at this particular conference, and there, everybody was in the giant stadium doing adoration. Yeah. And we didn't know how our kids, you know, until you watch, react, yeah. yeah, how they were mm -hmm. going to react with it. And they were so reverent. You, could, you couldn't believe that the kids yeah. could be that quiet. Yeah. And then they all got out of their seats of the arena. And these are like giant football stadiums. And they're, you know, because there's almost 25,000 people. And they started praying out. And we went down the streets. It was in Kansas City and followed after adoration. Oh, and it was, right. oh my How goodness. Powerful. It was, we literally prayed yeah. through the downtown, and yeah. I think it impacted even to people in the city mm -hmm. that 
it was just so neat. And the kids were absolutely wonderful. They got it. They they understood what adoration was. They understood, you know, how amazing and spiritual. And they just felt so. They were so on fire. They kept talking about. It. They still years later are talking about that. Um, that is on Saturday Saturday night. They have adoration at the stadium too there at San Diego University. And also it's an amazing experience because everything is so quiet. They, they turn down the lights and everything. And so the only thing that they do is, is they, they expose the Blessed Sacrament on the altar there and they play some very beautiful music that is not all that upbeat or anything like that. And the kids, it's amazing that they are drawn into this, into the silence and into this they start yelling really very hard, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I want you. It is, for me as a pastor, as, as an, an adult, it's, it's an incredible experience. It, it brought tears to my eyes just to see all those teenagers there longing and yelling and crying for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were, or, were physically crying. They were crying for Jesus. They wanted him, and um, the the way that the whole thing is set up is that they will have uh, you know people that will be helping those those kids out because some of this some of them will pass out and things things like that. So, yeah, people are are there to counsel them and to be with them and all that stuff. But it's an incredible, beautiful experience that the teenagers from Saint Mary's had um, last um, summer. Mm. Sounds exciting. Yeah, well, it's beautiful. It's I remember amazing. Here, in the year 2000, I was at the youth. Uh, we had the Holy Year, of course, and Pope John Paul II invited all the youth for in August, which is not the ideal time to be in Rome, but anyway, it was awfully hot and humid. But at the final Mass in Tor Borgata, which is just about an hour outside of Rome, there were 2.4 million young people. Two more dollars a year. Were they, they, yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. It was like a pasture of all these undulating hills, like, you know, dairy farm type of a topography. And for as, as far as the eye could see, one hill after another, just wall to wall human beings, you know, and these are all young people who were there to go to Mass with the Holy Father. And uh, it was just a phenomenal experience. And, um, and it just shows you that our young people are hungering. Well, thanks again for coming back. I sure appreciate it. It's just been an exciting and a, very interesting for me to hear you talk, and it's, uh, I must say, it's helped me to uh, also renew my, my interest in and my love for youth ministry and the importance of youth ministry. I do a lot of confirmations. I'm just there briefly, and it's a wonderful opportunity to see our young people, but this has been a wonderful insight for me to get more of a glimpse into youth ministry and what it's all about. Thanks again uh, for being with us, Michaela and Shelley and Father Vidal. Really appreciate it. Thanks again for joining us for another version of Tuesday Tapestry. I really appreciate your being with us. I hope these are helpful as we take a time together to reflect on our faith and some important elements in it. Thanks again and God bless.